Hey guys, welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klimzeski with Adam Atkinson. Episode two in peak week for men's bodybuilding and men's classic physique. We're going to talk about body types before we get into the, the nitty gritty about uh, actual peaking methods. And uh, you, were, you were just saying, Adam, that people who uh, end up looking you know, just, just maybe a little bit leaner are still going to have an advantage as long as they can still pull off the aesthetic of the division of classic bodybuilding. But between the two divisions, you know, I mean, in, in let's, let's just go all the way up to something like the, the Mr. Olympia type standards for men's bodybuilding versus classic. Where would you say, if you're talking to a client, you know, this is probably the best direction for you. What, what body type nuances are you judging that on? Mm -hmm. Well, I would say in classic, you're probably going to end up with a uh, mezzo. Um, so you're going to find someone that's right in the middle. And if you're going extreme bodybuilding, you've got to think that muscle's metabolic. So if you do have an endo in there, that's not too bad. They're going to end up being able to get huge. Um, at that point, you can actually have a higher body fat level and look relatively lean because your muscle bellies are so massive at that point. Um, if I, I think a great example is that last year's Mr. Olympia, Big Rammy, had came in multiple shows, not conditioned enough. And for the past eight years, we've been saying if he comes in condition, he will win. And uh, I think that was very much body type determined. I don't think he was ever a guy who didn't follow his diet. Now, a lot of people made claims of that. I think it just took multiple times of cutting for him to finally get lean enough. And uh, he nailed it this show, finally got the title. And uh, I think that's a great example of someone who competed long enough to you know, obtain the one thing that they didn't have, which was the leanness. So get leaner and uh, take the title. Right. And, and I'll give, I'll use me as an example for classic physique, because when it first came out, I saw this happen. You know, I, I always used to, to, to joke that, that I would be a much better bodybuilder if you could stop dieting around five or 6%, because uh, being a little bit of an endo for me to get my, my glutes strided or just get lean enough, you know, those last two or three pounds really cost me a lot of upper body size, which costs some symmetry. And, and if I, you know, if it was just allowed to be a little bit fuller, you know, that, that would have suited me better. And I think of clients very similarly, you know, if you have what it takes to compete on that level of just extremes, extreme conditioning, extreme size, then obviously bodybuilding is for you. But I think a lot of people still even just like that look and feel of being a little bit more aesthetic and not having to go for those extremes. And so I, I think it's almost self-regulating where people just by their own, you know, likes and dislikes in the sport will, will find which division is, is right for them. But, you know, also in terms of, you know, kind of where you fit in, maybe in the chronology of your career, you know, this is something that, that I'd like you to address. There, there are people who year after year after year after year of PED use or abuse, you know, they start out looking a certain way. And then whether it's, you know, the infamous G, uh, GH gut or something like that, or just the, the changing amount of, you know, symmetry as they get larger with, with more years under their belt, you know, they wouldn't necessarily fit in that classic physique mold. And so some people may start out that way and then just feel like, man, now I don't fit that division. Is that something that you're seeing or, or are we just kind of not there yet as a sport? We are, you know, um, there, there's multiple people who probably get into the sport and push the drugs too early um, before they even find their, their base or uh, a stopping point from natural growth. And, uh, you know, take Kai Green, for example, who competed naturally for years. Um, you know, he was winning as a natural. And um, I do believe they even got his IFBB Pro card without using. And then he, he started using and just really blew up. Um, so I always say, you know, you can't really turn a pug into a giraffe. And I think that's kind of the concept or um, ideology I like to look at when people try to use PEDs too soon. So you really want to make sure you have your base and a relatively good foundation. And if you're not, 
if you're using drugs and you're pushing classic physique and having a hard time gaining that size, you probably don't want to use more and try to shoot for bodybuilding. Um, so you probably want to do things that are going to be more classic physique based if the size is never going to be there. I, I think you almost have to look a generation back to see the etiology of those changes. And so you go from like a, an era of Lee Haney to Dorian Yates, to Ronnie Coleman, Jay Cutler, Phil Heath, and on up. And, and there were, and not just those winners, but you see all of the people who were competing. And there were just some people who weren't willing to go that far. You know, you think of the Lee Labradas who said, you know, I'm going to, this is, this is the look I want. I'm not going to go to that extreme risk my health. I just don't want to look like that. And so, you know, they kind of got catabolized in, in the sport, but that's why I, I think the officials, pulled back and, and created the, the whole classic physique movement is to allow guys like that to still have a place. Yep, absolutely. If you look at Frank Zane and Arnold, those are perfect examples too of what a classic physique would be. So yeah, absolutely. It is nice to know that, you know, um, still the genetic bests are going to win. Um, and there's guys who are in classic who probably have a hard time staying in classic weight. And uh, hey, that's a great problem to have. <laughs> yep, yep. Awesome. Well, guys, we're going we're gonna to move on to episode three, where we start talking about peaking options for these two divisions. So we will see you next time in Contest Prep University.